So we have a problem that we need to discuss, and that is that everyday goods are expected to go up in price. Yes, inflation is coming back. That's a problem. But this also explains why the American people are now saving money at the fastest rate since 2021, because we are concerned. And I wanna explain what's going on because we have a supply chain potential crisis on our hands. And I wanna give you an update on what's coming. So here's just some of the information that we have learned over the past few days. First, American Express, they're saying that their premium customers are spending through the recession. They're not gonna stop. They're gonna to continue to spend more money. We also know that SoFi is saying that consumers are taking out more personal loans than they have over the past year. And we also know buy now, pay later is ramping up again, which means more debt. That's a problem. Now, is this the concern though? Is this why we're having this supply chain potential crisis? The answer is no. We're not having a supply chain crisis because American Express says consumers are spending through the recession, or at least their premium customers are. We're not having a supply chain crisis because uh, SoFi says we have more consumers taking out personal loans. No, the, the real issue, the concern is China. China's opening back up again, okay? And according to Goldman Sachs, they say that we currently have a supply chain bottleneck that is equal to that of August, 2020. Do you remember what happened in 2020? Do you remember how most of the world was just closed down at this time? Which means at that time and currently, we don't have a potential bottleneck. According to Goldman Sachs on their scale of zero through 10, 10 being the worst, zero being the best, we're at a two. We are at a two today. And again, today is a different day than what we were experiencing back in 2020. Here's what we do know. Today, the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell stated that inflation is declining. Good news, it's, it's going down, right? That's, that's awesome, that's great. And he's right, inflation as a whole is declining. But what about essentials, right? This is food, utilities, right? Shampoo, toiletries, gasoline, rent, things like that. Those things, are likely going to increase over the coming months. And I talked about this just the other day as well. But here's what's happening. What, what happens when China doesn't wanna do business with the US? What happens if we can't do business with China? What happens when everyday goods are in short supply because everybody is buying them? Well, prices go up. We, we know what's gonna happen. And consider this for a moment. China currently controls roughly 60% of the world's production of rare earth minerals and materials. Just an example of what things like lithium and cobalt are used for. These are used for computers to household appliances, batteries, wind turbines, solar panels, and obviously electric vehicles. But again, this is just a small example of some of the uses of these rare earth minerals. These rare earth minerals are used in so many different things right, to your cell phone, right, to your cars, your TVs, it doesn't matter. These things are being used. Got an electric toothbrush? Guess what? There's probably a, a rare earth mineral that is used to produce it. Yeah, that's a problem. Now, I bet you can see why experts all across the world are saying that inflation isn't over. And here in the United States, the tensions between China and the US, they're tense at best best okay now according to a white house advisor last week he said that the u.s has a lot of quick catching up to do in order to be uh, competitive against countries like china especially when it comes to our supply chain independence we're not independent we rely on outside countries in order for us to get anything that we need especially china and according to the special presidential coordinator uh, amos uh, Hochstein, he says, and I quote, look, this is a major concern for the U.S. and I think for the rest of the world. As we are going into a cleaner, greener, and entirely new energy system, we have to make sure we have a diversified supply chain, which as of right now, we just don't. He also goes on to say, and I quote, 
We can't have a supply chain that is concentrated on any country. Doesn't matter which country that is. We have to make sure from the mining and refining process to the building of the batteries and wind turbines that we have a diversified system that we can be well supplied for. That is the only way this will work for an economy per, from an economy perspective. And it's true, we have to diversify. We cannot rely on just one country because when you do, and that one country decides to, well, cut you off in oil, cut you off in goods, well, you know what happens, right? We saw what happened when, when Russia decided to cut off the West from oil. Prices went up, right? Yeah, that's kind of what we're gonna see. And keep this in mind. The United States was supposed to work its way away from China. We were supposed to find ways to produce more goods in other countries that were gonna be you know, fairly competitive, including our own. But the truth is that we just haven't done it yet. And most companies still rely heavily on China for all of their goods or a decent portion. Let's just think about China or uh, Walmart for a second when it comes to China. Walmart, there's more than 230 million customers that shop at Walmart each week. This is worldwide. But 70 to 80% of these products that Walmart sells are manufactured in China. Less than 20% of products that are sold in Walmart stores are produced in the United States. And as demand across the world increases for Chinese goods, guess what? The prices are going to increase as well. So when economists are telling us that inflation is declining, they are right in a sense. As a whole, inflation is declining. But when it comes to everyday essentials, prices are likely to go up, not down. So what does this mean for the US moving forward? Well, here's what one White House official had to say, and I quote, we have to recognize that we have not invested. And that's what the United States is trying to do now, is not only say the same old talk of we want to have partnerships, we're going to come to this table together with our G7 allies. We're going to pool our resources. We're going to make sure that the money is there. So in other words, the plan for us here in the United States is we have a plan, we're going to talk about it. But as of right now, nothing has been done, okay? So here's what I can tell you. Inflation is likely coming back and inflation is going to hit us in the, the products we use on an everyday basis, okay? These are consumer goods, these are the food products, right? That's where we are gonna be hit because of inflation, not disinflation. So for all those people that are saying inflation's coming down, it's true, it is as a whole. But when you look into the specifics, the things that the majority of lower and middle income Americans are paying for, these are everyday goods that are actually going up in price, not down. So let me ask you one question. What is one food item that you have purchased recently that has gone up in price? I'll start. And so one of the items that I purchased before, even back in the, when the whole closures were happening in 2020, this is what the first item that I purchased was Oreos. Oreos, I used to be able to buy for $2.99 a package. Then they went up to $4.99. Currently, I paid $6.79 for one pack of Oreos just the other day. I can tell you right now, I am savoring each and every one of them. But again, let me know one food item that you purchased just recently that went up in price. Because again, everyone's saying inflation is coming down. Where well, I'm here to tell you, no, it's not.